He is a former USAF K-9 security policeman. Tonight's speech is speech number eight out of the CC manual, and uh, that is the use of visual aids. The name of his speech, the use of force dilemma. Mark Kadar, the use of force dilemma. Shlomo, can I ask you to step up here? I'm going to ask you all to interactively participate with me for a second, please, in a somewhat visual game of charades. So Shlomo, please place your hands. I'm going to place my hands against yours, and I just want you to press against mine as I press against yours. We'll do this for a few seconds. So just go ahead and resist against me. So somebody please tell me, we've all kind of learned this in physics class, what is, what is happening here? What is this unique Newtonian force? For every action there is an this equal is, and opposite reaction. Exactly, thank you very much. This is a brief introduction to force. Suncoast Toastmasters, distinguished guests, Madame Toastmasters, tonight's talk is the use of force dilemma. So again, as I mentioned, we've all been exposed to, whether it be high school, elementary, college, and I'll step out of the way here so that everyone can see this Newtonian principle, force equals mass times acceleration. You all saw me applying force to Shlomo's hand. And that force was a combination of my mass and the amount of pressure that I was applying. He was doing the same thing. One of the things that we, we are dealing with here, recently in the press, is the use of force dilemma. Because of the age of technology, everyone has the ability to uncover what some of us may have heard about or knew, or, or knew was the abuse of the use of force. Now, I'm not going to get into any particular issues as it comes to whether it is racial or it's political, but I'm coming to you from the background as someone who has worn the badge in the military and has been indoctrinated in the use of force. So what you're looking at here is this really handsome guy. <laughs> um, in 1991 at Medina Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. And my training partner, Hasso, which is a German Shepherd, I've just completed canine training and I'm on my way to Patrick Air Force Base. I've completed the police academy and in the police academy, one of the things that they train all policemen, whether they be canine or regular um, police person, is the use of force. The same thing as it is in the civilian world. Why is that? Because we hold a tremendous amount of responsibility with the weapons that we have. The dog is a weapon. We have a pistol. That's also a weapon. But even ourself, as a police person, is a weapon. So the use of force we're taught starts from, number one, your presence. That is a deterrent. And if that's not enough, then you elevate that to using your voice. In this instance, I was taught to say, halt, security police, or Halt, I'll release the, my dog. That doesn't work. I also had a baton. If the person or the situation required me to use some extra level of control. Now, if that person or situation escalated, whereas there was a similar type of aggressive force that's coming upon towards me, where it's possible that I may feel my life to be threatened, then I had the next level of force for me as a canine officer, every officer doesn't have this, is to use my dog, which is also 
depending upon how hard he bites, could be lethal force. And if the dog does not do the job, then finally I can take out my rifle or my pistol and then use what we all come to understand as deadly force. Another handsome picture of myself. <laughs> this is me on the other side of the state at Patrick Air Force Base with my partner, Max, which is 62 pounds of, of energy and vivaciousness. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of gregariousness. <laughs> <laughs> Two situations I encountered once I got to base that would bring this discussion around use of force together. I used to work the night shift and I received a call that there was a burglary in progress at a house and that the burglars, excuse me, the burglars had pistol whipped the persons in the house. So like any other persons, I, wherever I was at, I traveled to that location with the lights in high rate of speed and I got there. Once I exited a car, my mindset was what is the appropriate force that I'm going to need to use to deal with this situation. Obviously, with something as violent like that, I was ready to use everything possible, and I did. The thing that was complicated about this situation was that it was at night, it was on beachside housing, so I had a two mile area to search. So I had my dog at arm's length, I had a flashlight and my gun out at the same time. Unfortunately, I could never ever locate those perpetrators, but I was ready based on that situation and what I knew, know for sure to have occurred to be used lethal force. The final situation was a shoplifting. I was working a daylight, day time shift, excuse me, from 6 to 12 in the evening. And the person who shoplifted it had just exited the base exchange or shopping mall for those who are not familiar with the military. I was dispatched to the area, and as I was approaching, I saw that person run in front of my police car. I jumped out of the police car with the dog, and immediately I told him, Halt! Security police! I'm going to release the dog. Immediately that person dropped the stuff, and that was it. I, didn't, I never had to go to my gun. The dog within himself was enough of a deterrent to stop that situation. Now, the thing that's confusing for me is listening to a lot of the things that have happened around the country and, and, and trying to really understand the thought process here. What you're looking at here is the use of force model and hopefully those in the back and on the sides can see but really the whole idea I want you all to go away with if you cannot see the fine lettering is that this is a stepped approach to using serious, lethal, body harm, killing somebody. And these are the steps that the officer should take comparing <coughs> the, the person you meet up with and your respective level of response to that lethal state. So as you all can see, this is not unique to the military. This is for all law, en law enforcement officers. So again, I pose this question to you, Sun Coast Toastmasters. Why are people just getting shot down in the street? Finally, my martial arts instructor shared one thing with me here, and I'm going to share it with you in closing. Use discretion in dealing out punishment to any assailant. Fit the degree of punishment to the situation.